you didn't actually think I was going to let 420 go without a weed vid, did you? I'm going to make one every day this week. So welcome to Weed Week. So the question I probably get the most is, can I get addicted to weed? And the answer is a resounding hell to the yes. So anything that pops off the feel-good chemicals in our brain, we can actually get addicted to. And THC, tetrahydrocannabinol, which is the um, natural chemical in cannabis that we get quote-unquote high from, it's actually getting, um, weed is getting stronger and stronger because the THC high content is going up and up every day. So the stronger something is and the faster it goes to the brain, the more likely we are to get addicted to it. And vaping actually brings things to the brain pretty quickly and um, in high concentration. So the other thing is how young somebody uses. So the younger you are, the more likely you are to get addicted, that you try something, but especially that you use something repeatedly. Happy Tuesday of Weed Week. So my question today is, can you overdose and die from weed? So there has never been a documented case of anyone using so much cannabis within such a short amount of time that they overdose and die from it. They've been trying to smoke out and kill rats in a lab and have not been able to. But people have definitely done some really dangerous and risky things that have killed them while they are high. Uh, you can overdose. And so an overdose looks like um, losing consciousness, um, anxiety, paranoia, uh, extreme nausea and psychosis. So at its extreme, people can lose touch with reality, not know who they are, what reality is. And that happens when people use something really strong or a lot of something. So marijuana concentrates like dab wax, um, THC, liquid, edibles, when people are consuming so much that they don't realize how much they've taken in or vaping so much that they don't realize what's up. So you can go Welcome to Wednesday of Weed Week. I had a follow-up question to my addiction video from the other day, which was, how do I keep from getting addicted to weed if I choose to use? So there's no guarantees, but research does give us a few things that make it more likely for us to get addicted to anything. One of them is age of use. So the younger that you try something, especially use it repeatedly, the more likely you are to get addicted. So putting that off as long as possible helps. Um, also, the stronger something is and the faster it goes to your brain, the more likely you are to get addicted. So so something like dab wax being vaped regularly is just asking for addiction, whereas using something lightly and rarely that is on the weaker side reduces your chances. Um, and even most importantly is having a bunch of other ways that work and that are convenient to have fun, to feel good about yourself, to connect with and belong with others, and to cope with life. Because you want weed to just be an option and not be something that you need to accomplish those things. Welcome to day four of Weed Week. Today's question is, does weed actually kill brain cells? So that is a big fat myth that a lot of us have grown up with. It doesn't kill brain cells, but it can impair the functioning of brain cells. That is important to understand. And for adolescents, which is under mid twenties, that it can actually impair the growth of the front part of your brain if you're using strong things or using regularly. So for everybody, when they are high and actually for days afterwards, it's shown that what impacted is our big picture thinking is impaired. So is our ability to sort of look at the consequences of our behavior, how it could affect other people, our motor skill functioning, our ability to um, think about complex things, to plan, all of that's impaired. For adolescents, it actually affects the growth of the front part of the brain so that those functions could be impaired into adulthood, again, if you're using heavily or using strong things at this age. Welcome to day five of Weed Week. So my question today was from an adult who wondered if the rumors are true that cannabis creates schizophrenia. So that is research gone wild and turned into a myth. So what the research does actually show is that someone with a genetic predisposition for schizophrenia or psychotic disorder um, who uses cannabis with some regularity or starts young, that it can trigger symptoms early, make them stronger, um, and make the disorder harder to treat. So the relationship with mental health is interesting because it's being prescribed in medicinal states to adults with fully formed brains and bodies <laughs> to treat anxiety and treat bipolar disorder with some effectiveness a lot of people are reporting. Um, but know that different people, even adults, respond differently to different strains. So some people get anxious and paranoid <laughs> and it makes it worse instead. So, But know that for young people, adolescents, that it is shown to worsen anxiety and worsen depression regardless of what it feels like, it makes it worse into adults. 
It is day six of Weed Week, and I had a really honest question to follow up with my video yesterday when I had made a comment about how adolescents can worsen their depression and anxiety from regularly using cannabis. And the question was, well, how can that be true? Because it really mm. makes my depression feel better, lifts me up out of my funky mood every time that I smoke weed. The problem is this, is that it is an illusion. It's a temporary fix. And meanwhile, it's keeping people from um, developing real coping skills that are long lasting and from changing things in their life that might be leading to their depression. But it's also acting on part of the brain that has to do with experiencing awe and wonder and pleasure in everyday things. And when that's being overstimulated, when the brain is still growing, it the result is um, an inability to feel those things on its own. So to experience pleasure in everyday experiences and boredom and depression. 